Just found out something crazy about the origins of Nigeria that shocked the hell out of me. Nigeria was never meant to be a country. Hey, my people, Nigeria was never meant to be Nigeria. Mokuna can hear the real origin of Nigeria. The thing when he pin me past, we say, day for school. History, they're not going to tell us the history of the real history of Nigeria. And I believe the thing when he pay me pass. Ah, I don't know how many years before I can't they know the real just found out something crazy about the origins of Nigeria that shocked the hell out of me. Nigeria was never meant to be a country. It was something else entirely. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what I discovered. Oh, and I want to acknowledge Burner Boy for bringing my attention to this in his song, Another Story, on his album, African Giant. Thank you for inspiring this video. And all of you, let Burner Boy know he got to me, and now I'm sharing this information with you. The creation of Nigeria was never about democracy, never about Christianity. It was all about money, business, and profit. None of it for us. Pay attention. The area now known as Nigeria was called the Slave Coast up to 1870. This was the point at which the British had stopped slave trading and moved on to palm oil as their primary commodity out of Nigeria. One of the main suppliers of palm oil was the Benin Kingdom. And you have to watch my video of one of the greatest African kings most of you have never heard of, Oba of Onrawen. This is an important story for me personally because I am from that region, so they are my people. And his fight with the empire over palm oil is one of the greatest stories of African colonial history. Anyway, everyone wanted palm oil, and especially the British. A man called George Goldie set up the United African Company in 1879, which was then changed to the National African Company. He structured the palm oil business in the Niger Delta region, and by 1884, he had a monopoly that the British could exploit. So in 1886, Goldie violated the agreement he had made with the chiefs and moved his operations into River Niger and Benue. The company was also renamed at this point to Royal Niger Company. Goldie tricked the chiefs into signing unfair trade deals, giving Goldie exclusive rights to export palm oil instead of what the chiefs thought would be free trade. These contracts were written in English, a language we didn't understand, and based on laws that were not our own. Now guys, this is similar to something I learned when I was in university about the deals done with the Native Americans in what is now known as the United States of America. Very similar thing where deals were done in contracts in English with laws that had nothing to do with the Native Americans. There was a meeting called the Berlin Conference in 1884 to 1885, set up by Germany's first chancellor, Otto van Bismarck. This was where the colonial powers discussed how to carve up Africa and structure trade across the pieces of our continent that they would take. We were not a part of this conversation. <laughs> the best way to think of this is like the NBA draft. Guys were out there making bids between lunch breaks and spa sessions. At this conference, the kingdom of Opobo was given to Britain. When King Jaja of Opobo tried to export his own palm oil, he was accused of obstructing commerce and then exile. How crazy is that? And on his way home in 1891, he was poisoned with a cup of tea. Guys, I couldn't make this stuff up. The Jaja of Opobo story made other chiefs in the region very wary of their deals with the British Empire. King Koko of Nembe Brass was one of those chiefs. He tried to take down the Royal Niger Company and attacked the company headquarters in Akasa by Elsa on January 29, 1895. King Koko captured 60 white men and lost 40 of his own soldiers. He used the 60 hostages to demand he be allowed free trade, the agreement he believed he had signed with the British company in the first place. They refused and he killed 40 of his hostages. The British Royal Navy retaliated by leveling the city of Brass completely on February 20, 1895. King Koko went into exile and the the British not only took control of the palm oil he once had, but also fined the people of his kingdom 500 pounds as well as confiscating their weapons. Tragically, King Koko committed suicide in exile in 1898 after being branded an outlaw by the British company that had taken his kingdom, palm oil, and reputation. The Royal Niger Company sold its territory to the British government for 865,000 pounds in the late 1800s. This territory was known as Nigeria. In 1914, the Southern Protectorate and Northern Protectorate was combined by Lord Lugard. And like that, the Royal Niger Company was rebranded as a country, which would gain independence on October 1st, 1960.
Lugard is a place in Nigeria today, like there's a street called Lugard in Ikoi. The Royal Niger Company changed its name to the Niger Company Limited, and it was then acquired by Unilever. Unilever still operates in Nigeria to this day. And that, my brothers and sisters, is how Nigeria came to be. We have a long way to go to fix the country, and it starts with the February elections. But we won't ever have a hope and a solution to our problems if we don't know how they started. Remember, it's not about asking anyone else to fix this. This is about knowing your history. Nigeria was never a country we created. It was a company designed by colonizers for profits. And a lot of the infrastructure put in place for that siphoning of resources out of our land are still very much in place today. Crude oil simply replaced palm oil and soon lithium may replace crude oil. I feel angry not just for what happened to my ancestors but the fact that I wasn't taught about this in school in Nigeria and that our children are not being taught about these things now. Nigeria is about to have the most important elections in our history. The results will affect not only our country, but the entire region of West Africa and in turn the rest of the world. Because you know that our resources are fueling a lot of people. Every Nigerian going to the polls should know everything about who we are and what we're up against and the creation of Nigeria. Uh, after listening to this, oh my God, our teacher to do us. Ah, maybe them self not even know. If you be say they no know. Because this is the main topic that should be taught in school, and even till now, they never they tell our children the real history of Nigeria. But before I beg, oh, as a parents, we have to do this by ourselves, oh, because I think they are hiding something. You see, all these people they, they hide something, but thank God for this, our uncle, for this, our brother, where be say he split out everything in details. This one is this, this, this video when I all watched today, eh, it just reached me. You all reach me to know myself, to know who I am, really, really. As I, my people are there, gonna help me share this video. May all the old Nigeria see this thing. May they see what you them be before. Ha! I bet you teach your children history. Oh, let them know who they really are. Very important. This video, save her for your phone so that when your children grow, show her to them.